Hello, mathematicians, puzzlers, and other curious people. We're here for the third step of making our beach pictures today. We're going to put the sun on it, and we're going to add some umbrellas. So, uh, so I need to get that loaded up because I've rebooted my computer between times because it was playing up. So I'm coming up here to main menu. You'll notice I'm logged in. I'm clicking open, and I'm opening the beach picture. I'm clicking edit. And it's thinking about that. Okay, here we go. Sometimes it takes a moment to think it over. Okay, so we've got some sand and an ocean and a sky, but we can make it look more like a beach by adding some other features to it. So I'm going to add the sun, and I'm going to have this be uh, a setting sun. So it's going to be right at the water line here. It's going to be a half circle. In order to make that work, I need to show some things that I had hidden before. So I'm going to come up here to the greater of those two numbers. That was the, the, the B, the 6.8. So I'm going to show the line that's based on uh, that particular number. And I'm going to drop two points onto that line. Now that I've done that, I'm going to use not the circle with center tool, but the semicircle tool to draw a semicircle between those points. Now that I've done that, I'm going to drag them into the picture. Okay, so one thing you might be wondering is uh, how do we get it filled in to actually look like the sun? What we're going to do for that is use a very zoomed in polygon to help us with that. So I'm going to zoom way in so that the semicircle that we're making the sun out of, or using to show the sun, is almost filling the whole space. And then I'm going to carefully drop points on there, spaced just as close as I can get them. The more points you do, the more this will look like a circle. So this is using a limiting process. And what we're saying is that a circle is the limit that a polygon approaches as that polygon has more and more sides. And we're only using half the circle, but it's still the same limit process. So we're drawing a shape using the circle to guide us, but the shape we draw will actually have many small straight sides. You see, we've come around the alphabet from I skipped uh, W and X all the way back around to I again. So this is a polygon with a very large number of sides, or at least it will be once we draw in the interior of it. So the next thing I'm going to do is come to the polygon tool, and I'm going to go back and click each of those sides. So you see how the tiny little segments between each pair of sides is following very closely with the circle. When we zoom out, we won't be able to tell that those are actually a bunch of tiny straight sides. It'll just look like, like one curve. Almost there. What's the one more thing we have to do? Always come back to your first point, your first vertex of the polygon. And now we need to work with our settings to make this look like the sun. So I'm going to make it very bright yellow and turn its opacity way up. And now I'm going to zoom out 
and see what I think about it. Well, I think it'd look better with those points hidden. So I'm going to come into my settings and hide them. So I'm going to click those selector buttons over and over until I've done all of them. I'm going to keep going. I know there were a lot of them, so I'm not surprised this is taking a while. Now, if you're uh, going to do this craft on paper, you can skip this part of it. You can just draw a semicircle using a compass and cut it out. So this is one way that doing the project on paper could be better. but it just depends on what you have handy. Okay, now, one interesting thing about this is if we decide we want to change it, like making the sun bigger, it's all redrawn automatically to help us out. We can put it a bit more off to the side. And that can be a good thing to do when you're doing a, a design because a little bit of asymmetry can make a picture more interesting looking. Now I notice it kind of seems like uh, like that the horizon is way up there. So I think I'm actually going to move that down a little. So I'm going to come back to my number selectors and I'm just going to slide that down a bit. Okay, it's a small change, it's subtle, but I think that spot looks a little bit better than the other. I'm, I'm still going to hide those two other points. Let's see, I'm not sure where in the list they are, so I'm just going to right click, settings, and unclick show object. And again, and I don't want to see this line anymore either. So I'm going to go in there and do that with that one also. So now we've got the sun. Well, when the sun comes out, one thing someone might do is put up an umbrella to get some shade. So let's see how we can make an umbrella. Now, because I'm going to drag this around, I'm going to use a circle to hold the pieces together because we saw when we were dragging around uh, the seashells to put them in place that having a circle in the center that everything was or that everything was sort of built off of helped with uh, not distorting and having to rearrange uh, how you know rearrange the the corners of the polygon once we got them where we wanted them so I'm going to draw a circle with a center there and a radius of two I might change that Now I'm going to draw a line across the circle and I'm going to mark the far point. Uh, so we've got the diameter of the circle marked here. And now I'm going to use that diameter in a particular way because we're not going to be looking at these umbrellas from the top where they're spread out completely symmetrically. We're going to be looking at them a little from the side. So they're going to be a little bit sort of compressed or visually distorted by that. So instead of uh, building a polygon on this circle, even though the circle's helping us out, we're going to use an ellipse. So I'm clicking my more menu until I find that. There, conics, short for conic sections. The one I want is an ellipse. So I'm going to use my two diameter endpoints. And I'm going to pick a point on the circle because that will help with keeping all the pieces together so that that ellipse is determined by the construction. Now that I've done that, let's see, I don't want to see that point anymore or, uh, well, I can still use that point or this one. And I don't even need to see the circle anymore or this line. 
but I do need to space out some more points on the ellipse. And then I'm going to draw a polygon going between those points. Whoops, not a regular polygon. This will be a very irregular one. And then umbrellas have line segments that uh, that connect each of those points to the center. Look at how an umbrella is built sometime. You'll see what I mean. Now we can hide that ellipse. Let's see, there it is. Okay. So now we can place that umbrella out into the picture. Now I think that this is a pretty big umbrella, but maybe that's okay. So I'm going to leave that how it is. Now I see that it's awfully see-through. It doesn't block the sun very well. So I need to turn up its opacity. Oh, I'm clicked onto a point there. So I need to turn up the opacity and I'm going to make it a bright color. And I'm going to make those segments uh, a color that I think will look good with it. Yeah, that should do. Okay, now this is just a preference, but I'm going to see if I can get that ellipse to be a little bit flatter. And I'm going to remember that I used this point to make the whole ellipse. And so by bringing it in, that sort of flattens out the whole thing. Okay, now I'd like to hide all those points. And I'm going to drag that up into the picture. Okay, so I notice it's covering the seashells a little bit. So I don't mind that. It's okay in layering if one figure, if one thing covers another a bit. But I notice there are some things showing through because of it. So we're going to edit that out at the end. So we're going to try our best to ignore that for now. But we might want to move things around a little bit to decide how much is showing or covered up. So that's your own decision about how to set that up. But, uh... When you're happy with that, you can go ahead and hide all those points you use to move things around. And just remember, if you're looking for being able to move something that's already on there, it can be a good idea to, uh, to click onto that polygon and find it in this list. And from there, we can we can try to find, let's see, just exactly where that point was. So we've got a polygon with, let's see, point I1 was involved. We can kind of trace this back, a little bit of detective work. Okay, that point was on circle S. And circle S had center P, and we can use that to move that around if we want to. So nothing's set in stone. But again, you can see right here where there are some things showing through. If you would like to 
move something around so that that's not that way anymore, that's okay. But it's also okay if things are overlapping. And on the last day of this, I'm going to show you how you can edit that out in a graphics program. Now, if you're making this out of paper that you're gluing down, that'll naturally not show through. So again, that's a way doing this with uh, with paper art supplies can save you a step. If you want to make more than one umbrella, that's okay. I made more than one seashell. You get to decide about that. So that's what I have for you today in this step. Uh, I hope you have fun with it. Uh, we can see that this beach is starting to shape up and look more like a beach, but I noticed this water is awfully flat and it doesn't really have any waves in it. So that's going to be the next thing I'm thinking about. But for now, I am going to say, calc you later.